Hey there, Adam. Good to hey, see Michelle. you. Hey, um, I wanted to ask you, do you ever get writer's block? No. Never? No. Well, look, I actually don't. And, and in saying that, I have stories that sometimes peter out and mm. just aren't working. And so I can kind of, I'll kind of leave them. But writer's block, I find is a really... I, writer's block seems to indicate that you can't write something. And I think you always can. Even and I, and we've talked people about the writer's way, where they just you just do morning pages where you just write for ten minutes, free flowing writing about anything, and you can always do that, and from that something will happen, or you can always. So I I just kind of think, but that, that writer's block and this probably sounds a bit awful can sometimes be a bit of an excuse as well. Oh, I can't write today. I've got writer's block. I can't think of anything to write of. I think there's always something you can write about doesn't mean it's going to be good. And I think that's a big thing is that sometimes you have to write that rubbish to get to the good stuff anyway. But I think sometimes people stop because they think it's rubbish. Whereas I think it's good to, to sort of push through that. Yeah. What do you think? I don't know. I think for me, I need to be in the right headspace to write. So mm -hmm. I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily call it writer's blog. And, um, I know there's people who get stuck with the story. So they've, mm. got, they've got maybe the, the beginning and they've got the end, but they have no idea what happens in the middle, right? And, right, yes. and, and, and they call that writer's block because, but I think um, for me, like if I'm stressed or anxious or if I know that there's a ridiculous amount of laundry to do or <laughs> something's happening with the kids, you know, it's really hard for me to sit and write and sometimes forcing mm. it um just makes me more anxious and <laughs> upset yeah. about it so I think it's about finding a balance but for me um sitting and staring at a blank piece of paper <laughs> or a laptop is not a solution so usually what I do when I'm having those moments where I'm like either I don't know where this story's going. I haven't got a very good ending or I'm just really crap as a writer in general. Mm. Um, I'll go for a walk. And I know yeah. there's a lot of people who do. So Aaron Blaby, he's he's a big walker. Um, yep. And I know you have your amazing exercise routine to keep that physique of yours I in do. top condition. <laughs> exactly and <laughs> and I know yeah others like um I was talking to George Ivanoff and I think he goes for runs and things like that and I think that's a really good point and, and which always ma it also makes me reconsider what I was saying before as well because you can certainly get stuck in stories and I think you're right when you push through and force it that can come through to the page as well although even in in sometimes it's good to get it down but if you're even if you're thinking 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 and then go for that walk or run sometimes the solution oh, sorry it's just started absolutely pouring here <laughs> it's oh got really gosh. loud um, <laughs> But yeah, that the solution can sometimes pop in after you've walked away rather than when you're trying to force it. So yeah, I think taking it and even yeah, in saying I think your writer's block, I take lots of breaks as well. Like I don't just sit and write for eight hours. I I can I can rarely do more than 45 minutes of writing in a row before I take a break and then come back to it later. Yeah. Oh, I was watching this really cool thing yesterday and I, it's got a name. I don't know what the name is, is a name. But Peter. Could be Peter. It starts yeah. with P, so it could be okay, Peter. Good. Um, and see, that's our mental telepathy hey, happening there. There's a name, and I'll find it and I'll put it in the comments. But basically, the, these scientist type people, you know how much we love scientist type people. Science. I know, right? Um, apparently, <laughs> they've done these experiments. You know, <laughs> what do scientists know? Right. And they re they've done studies on the human brain, and they reckon that you can really only be productive for 25 minutes at a time. Mm. So that you should be setting yourself a 25 minute timer. And for me, that's awesome because. I don't sit still for long. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, you know, and even now with, with the kids at school, they have got a limit where they are only allowed to do 10 minutes. So they, really? they yeah, 10 minutes, because after 10 minutes, they've done studies on kids' brains that even if you do more than 10 minutes, they're not actually absorbing. Wow, that's so interesting. Coming in. So, yeah, so 25-minute blocks apparently is the optimum. So I think if, I think there is such a thing as writer's block and I absolutely agree that there's always something to write about. But I also think that um, your headspace is just so important, especially if you're writing for kids, because one, they can smell a phony 
yeah. reading yeah, yeah. through the pages and yeah. they'll know. But you, you don't want to bring necessarily that angst into a story unless it's an angsty story. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that one of the things that I find helpful is to be working on more than one project at a time, which means if you get stuck on one, you can go and work on another. And even if it's something totally different, so even if it is working on a, a sort of whimsical kid's book in the morning, but then working on like a horror movie or an adult, if it was just for your own pleasure that you're never going to do, but that can sort of get that get that angst out of you and it's a totally different part of your brain again and so when you come back to the kids when you've got that sort of space and yeah no, i think actually right and, and that 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 mindset and the, the space that you're in is really important because yeah if, if again I, I believe that your energy comes into the story and out of the story when the kids yeah, are reading I, so I think mm -hmm. i think you need to have that good space but which is why it's good to have other things going as well and and also the idea that i think people worry that they're not going to get any more ideas sometimes and that the idea they work on is the only idea they're going to get. So when you get blocked on it and get stuck in it, you get really frustrated. And say, oh, but you can do other stuff as well. Like if you're working on that, that doesn't have to be the be all and end all. And I think that can almost force writer's block or the idea that you're blocked and stuck on, on writing on, in all forms because yeah. you can't do that one story. Whereas I think that's not true at all. Like there's, if you step away from that and can do something else, even if it's just a, a silly play fun thing that's never going to be shown to anyone ever, that's that's a way to sort of sort of get through that and realize that, oh I've got I've got lots of ideas on other stuff as well I can I don't just have to do that I can come back to that yeah. but for now I can leave it and go on to something else and that's also the so true. Thing is interesting because I was reading something the other day saying that if say we get a text message or something it might only be 30 seconds to look at it but that's going to actually take say five minutes because the time you take to stop to look at it to read it to refocus I without thinking it. about that. Yes. So yeah. that five minutes out of your 25, suddenly that's big. So I yeah. think that's really important in terms of being in the space is to get rid of all that stuff and just, if it's going to be 25 minutes, 25 minutes focused. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, it, you know, you can come at it from two different perspectives. So you've got the perspective of a person who's just starting out who has ridiculous imposter syndrome, like who am I to write this story and all of those negative things come in and then you have the more developed person who has published books who are like crap maybe I have no more good books left in me like there's there's those two men because they were talking to Alice Cooper and um he's amazing he's so cool and they were saying to him about you know you're still doing this like he's in his he's in his 80s or something like he's at least 70s like, yeah he's older than me anyway um <laughs> so and he was saying well of course i'm still doing it. i haven't written my best work yet and like oh, he's still writing songs and he's still creating and i want that like i love that mindset and so that was a big game changer for me was like i still haven't written my best work yet so i have it's to keep really writing mean. but then i think also when you get to that level you stop writing for fun like mm -hmm. you're always writing to get published or you're always writing like, who am I going to pitch this to, you know, and that's dangerous. Very dangerous. Agreed. I think, again, especially kids' books, because kids' books are so fun to read and to write and to work on. They're still the hard bits of the editing and things. But, yeah, I think that writing for fun is massively, massively important. And, and also that idea of you haven't written your best thing yet that sort of plays into that as well because the, the best thing is going to be something you enjoy. It's not going to be something that you're just grinding out. Like a lot of people say, I'm writing such hard work, you've got to push and grind it out. I find the ones that are the most enjoyable books and have end up doing better are the ones that are just fun to write and you're giggling as you're writing it or you're yeah. getting upset as you're writing it because it's an upsetting thing. I think those ones, again, where it's really you in the book and you're on the page are the best ones. So yeah, you've got to, got to play and have fun. And that, it also comes down to just writing some silly stuff sometimes and and just not worrying if it's good or bad, like which is easier said than done. But <laughs> especially a first draft, just getting down, just just ever just rubbish. And then yeah. playing with that and finding the gold in that. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Awesome. What a good talk we had. Yes, really good. Awesome. I talked about 25 times today. Makes you want to go and write now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you next week. Awesome, can't wait. See ya.